Let's take a look at some M90 blower mists. It's too small, it's too hot, and you can't use it on big motors. Yeah! I'm Richard Holder. Welcome to the channel. I'm at West Tech Performance, and normally we're doing lots and lots of dyno testing, and this video will include dyno testing. But what I want to cover today are three of the most common myths associated with the little M90 supercharger. That's right. First of all, let's see. It's too small to make power. That's right. Is it too small really to make power? It heats up the air a lot. That's why we call it a heating. Does it really heat up the air? Next one, it only works on small motors. I mean, let's face it. It did come on a little 3800. Does that mean you can't put it on a big block? Those are all three common myths. So let's find out if they're true. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and talk about the first of our three M90 myths, and that's one I get this all the time. That's that the M90 is too small to make any real power. Well, that's true, and it isn't true, and it, it's true in that we can't take an M90 supercharger and make a 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 horsepower with it because it's just not sized for that. In the same way that we can't do that with a turbo. If we go to the wrecking yard and we pick up, let's say, a... Uh, a small turbo from a Volvo or a Saab or an old T-Bird or one of the one of the applications for a diesel truck, we can't make a thousand horsepower with that turbo because it's not sized to do that, and neither is the M90. But I think that the mistake that people really make about the M90 is they think because it originally came on a motor, a V6 motor, that was making between 240 and 260 horsepower, that they think that that's how much power it will support. The reality is that that supercharger will support a lot more power, even though it is a fixed displacement. The M90 is a particular size. But the size of the blower isn't the only thing that dictates the actual flow rate or power potential offered by that supercharger. We do have a fixed rate, meaning that for every, or a fixed displacement, meaning that for every revolution, it supplies a given amount of airflow and can support a given amount of power. But if that is fixed, the speed of the blower is not. So if we spin the blower faster, we're delivering more airflow. In this case, we probably would be delivering more boost as well. And that we therefore make more power. Turning the boost up, spinning the blower faster is very common among these blowers. And that's why people make the pulleys for them. You spin the blower faster, you make more power. But more boost is actually also a negative, and here's why. The third thing to think about with the supercharger in terms of sizing is we have a fixed size, we can spin it faster, but if we also apply it to a more powerful and naturally aspirated motor, we bring the boost down and bring the horsepower up. And the reason for that is if we, if we have a fixed displacement blower and we have a fixed blower speed, let's pick 15,000 RPM. And on our not very powerful naturally aspirated, aspirated motor, let's say we're making 15 pounds of boost. Well, that's great. But you know, it'd be even better if we took our naturally aspirated motor and we modified it and we had it make more power before we added the supercharger, cam, ported head, that kind of stuff, and we lowered the boost. That's exactly what we did on our LS combination. We applied this supercharger, which everybody thinks is too small. We put it on a, a very powerful naturally aspirated LS V8 and we were able to make over 650 horsepower. What that means is the blower has enough airflow to support that power level. In fact, it's actually making more than that because it's making what the NA motor made. It's making the additional, it's, it has the airflow to support the additional power up to 650 horsepower. And then what nobody talks about is there's parasitic loss associated with driving the supercharger. It's actually making that power too. We just don't see it on the dyno because it gets subtracted because it's parasitic loss. It's power that we used to drive the blower. And I'll give you a good example of all three of those things. So we have basically a stock L67 or L32 3800V6 and run with the supercharger with a stock pulley on it. It made, when we ran it on the engine dyno, 282 horsepower. But with that same blower, we were able to spin the blower faster with a pulley change. And we also modified the naturally aspirated motor to make it more efficient as well. We ran that with a cam and mildly ported heads. And then on that combination, we made 450 horsepower. So it is at a 260 horsepower blower or is it a 450 horsepower blower? And then as we see on the V8, we made way over 600 horsepower. In fact, we got up to 652 on one of the runs with a tick intercooler and a ported blower from the guys at Jokers. 
So the supercharger will support this kind of power level, but you have to spin it fast and apply it to a very powerful combination. Okay guys, M90 myth number two is that it is a heating meeting. That's, that's the nickname because the M90 supercharger heats up the air so bad. And we need to talk about this because actually temperature is always a function of compression. So if we have boost, which we look at as a positive, you know, having boost is good, having more boost is even better. But the downside to that is a change in charge temperature. It doesn't matter whether it comes from a turbo or a roots blower, a centrifugal blower, a twin screw blower, they all heat the air to varying degrees. Now, a positive displacement supercharger like this Eaton obviously is kind of low man on the totem pole in terms of efficiency. This is especially the case if we have elevated uh, boost levels and then we have elevated charge temperatures and that's what happens on an m90 if you have it on a v6 or like we ran it on a v8 and you're spinning it very very fast and making a lot of boost the charge temperature the increase in charge temperature comes from compression which we see as boost so the higher the boost the higher the temperature here's the thing to think about I'm showing you some Dyna results here, or actually some charge temperature results of testing that we ran on an M90 supercharger. This one had an intercooler. These are all temperatures after the intercooler. These are charge temperatures at various different boost levels, 10 pounds, and, and, and I think we were up near 15 pounds. And we had a ZZP intercooler on this combination, and the intercooler obviously helped cool the charge temperature off. But here's the thing to think about. You cannot, even with a turbo or any of the other superchargers, if you run without an intercooler and you're running elevated boost pressures, you're going to have elevated charge temperatures. Here are a couple ways to combat that. One, obviously, you make sure that you have a cold air inlet system going into your supercharger. This is particularly important on applications where you don't have a factory intercooler, like we saw with the 3800s and the superchargers. Those were designed to run about seven pounds and they're actually fairly efficient at seven pounds. The charge temperature is fairly low, but the problem is guys don't stop at seven pounds. They want to spin it faster. They want to make more power, but what they should really be doing, and we talked about this a little bit on the, on the blower sizing, is that they should be improving the power output of their naturally aspirated motor to bring the boost down because you bring the power up and you bring the boost down. But let's get cold air to the blower. If you're going to raise the boost pressure a lot and have lots of charge temperature, you should always be thinking about an intercooler. An intercooler is always a good idea. So cold air and intercooler. And then what we also want to do to improve the charge temperature situation for any kind of force induction, even an M90, particularly a roots blower, if we're running elevated boost pressures, is let's make that naturally aspirated motor more efficient. Let's bring the boost down. Let's put a cam in it. Let's put ported heads on it. Let's allow it to process more of that air, bring the boost down, and two things happen. The charge temperature comes down, so we have better density and better safety. We don't have to worry about detonation as much. And also the flow rate of the supercharger, as we talked about before, increases when we decrease the boost. That's kind of a win-win. Let's take a look at number three. Okay, let's take a look at M90 myth number three, and that's you can't use these on bigger motors like Richard. Can you use a, why you couldn't put an M90 on a big block Chevy? Actually, you certainly can. Now you can't put it on a 900 horsepower big naturally aspirated big block Chevy, but if you go to the wrecking yard and get a Gen 6 454, for instance, an M90 would go on there very nicely and easily add another 100 or 150 horsepower. When I run those particular motors, they make about 375 or so. And so 375 naturally aspirated horsepower would be the same as me putting it on uh, any kind of decent, you know, cammed 4.8 or 5.3, put the blower on there, spin it fast enough, free up the inlet size, and it makes lots of power. So really, you shouldn't be thinking about the M90 supercharger versus the engine displacement because the blower doesn't know engine displacement. It just knows I have this size blower and I'm spinning this fast. And if I have inlet restrictions, it recognizes that as well. And then it just recognizes whatever the NA power output of the naturally aspirated motor is. And it's trying to supply airflow to match that. I'll give you a good, I, good example here. In fact, it can be argued that if you put it on a more powerful naturally aspirated motor, as we've covered a couple of times now, it's even better. So putting it on a bigger motor like a 454 would actually work very, very well. Here's an example where we ran two different combinations. One was a 3800 V6, so a 3.8 liter V6. The other one, a 5.3 liter V8. 
uh, an LS base motor. And what we did was we ran them the same blower with the same pulley. Actually, this is not the same blower. It's the same blower, but one of them was ported. Um, but the porting picked up about 35 horsepower or so when we did the porting test. But what we have here is a 3.8 liter versus a 5.3 liter. And both of them are modified, not to the same extent, but the 3800 had the ported heads. It had a, it had a camshaft upgrade. Stock bottom end, same thing with the 5.3, stock bottom end had really good heads on it and a really big camshaft um, and actually a really good intake manifold on it, which the 3800 didn't do. But we see here that the supercharger will support both of these power levels. Same, or different, wildly different displacements, wildly different power outputs for the NA combination, and yet the blower will still support this kind of power level. Over 650 horsepower for the V8, about 450 for the V6. The boost pressure was much, much higher on the V6 because the blower was spinning very close to the same speed. We didn't rev it out quite as high, but if you match it at the same engine speed, we're spinning the blower at about the same speed. But a big change in the amount of power that you're making because we've made our naturally aspirated motor more efficient, which you would do if you put it on a bigger motor. And also because therefore the boost pressure comes down. So now what do you guys think? Is the M90 really too small? Is it too hot? And can we not use it on a bigger motor? Armature holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.